As we know, Christianity is a way of life. You know, they used to call it the way back in the first century. And it is a, it is a way of life. And the fundamental, uh, two fundamentals are our relationship with God and our relationship with others. And, you know, it's, it's easy to think about that in a general way. And God wants us to think about it in a very specific way, in how we can apply his principles, his laws, his way of life as we live. It's easy to, a lot of ways, it's easy to see the sins of others, isn't it? But it's not so easy to see our own sins. And today I want to uh, look at that, how hard it is to hate our own sins. And so for an SPS, my SPS is how do we learn to hate our own sins? How do we learn to hate our own sins? And if I have enough time, uh, get into some of the more specifics as to love God's way of life. <clears throat> so, you know, in, other word, in, in order to uh, put on God's righteousness, we have to replace that, those sins with his way of life, his law, his principles, his, his uh, way of living and thinking. And I've, I spoke about this a couple of times about the heart of God, of uh, tomorrow's Father's Day. So we'll talk a little bit about the heart of God, the Father. And uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, the heart is, uh, consists of three main components, the mind, the affections, and the will, free will. And it's, it's very important to uh, think about those three components. Today I'm going to focus a little bit more on, well let me, let me just read the uh, components of the mind. Uh, the mind is the greatest influencer of the heart, if you think about it. It's the greatest, uh, it makes the greatest impact on our heart. And our mind consists of consist of our thoughts, our beliefs, our conscience, our memories, our understandings, judgments, and discernment. That that's breaks down the mind. And today I want to try to zero in a little bit on our understanding of that uh, part of the mind, our understanding of it, because it is very important to understand God's way of life. And it doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come easily sometimes. Sometimes uh, we have a hard time really understanding what Scripture says. Uh, even, even simple things, you know, even things that are obvious. You know, a lot of times obvious is obvious, but the aspects, the details of that obvious is not so obvious. We have to think about it. And so I've got five points regarding my topic. And the first point is we need to acknowledge our sin, our sins. Probably the toughest thing to do, to acknowledge our sins. Uh, the human carnal mind doesn't like to acknowledge our sins. It, uh, it, it, uh, it goes way back, way back to, you know, Satan, Lucifer was uh, from what we can understand, he was the right-hand man of God for who knows how many millennia. He was the right-hand man, if I can say that right, he was God's right-hand man, Lucifer was. And he turned sour, eventually turned sour. And so we have that carnal mind, and the carnal mind, as we all know, is enmity towards God. It, it doesn't like God's way of life. Now, we're, we're you know, God clearly says that uh, human beings are uh, good and evil. So there's a lot of good to human beings, a lot of good to human beings. Human beings do a lot of good things. But there's also that, that other side of, of 
of human beings, and we, we need to understand it more clearly. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to zero in on today. Why, why, do we, uh, why do we not acknowledge our sins? You ever think about that? Why don't we acknowledge our sins? There's a number of reasons. Probably we could come up with 20 or 30 reasons, but I've come up with four or five. Sometimes we don't have a correct and thorough understanding of the scriptural principle. And uh, uh, during the message chat, I'm going to, uh, I hope to ask you to give me specific examples of some of the points that I'm going to make. I don't necessarily like to get into specifics but because of a number of reasons, but I think it might be a good message chat to really get into the specifics of some of the points that are made here and, and examples. And we all have different examples. We all have different strengths. Every human being has different strengths and every human being has, has weaknesses just the way God made us. I've never met a human being that, uh, that had a lot of strengths or, for that matter, had a lot of weaknesses. There's usually a few strengths and a few weaknesses with every human being. And so we're all different. And uh, we need to look at that. And, and, and so I'm going to ask during the message chat some of the examples that... Uh, uh, we might have regarding some of these uh, points that I make. And we will not assume that if you bring up an example that you're talking about yourself, you know, because that's a tendency that human beings have. We don't want to do that. Uh, it, we're just asking for examples. Another reason why we don't acknowledge it, sometimes we don't know the principle is even in the, in the Bible. Again, I'd like to get into some examples regarding that. There are a number of times where we don't even know that uh, that particular sin that we might not know about is e even in the Bible. So how could we know it if we don't know that it's a sin? And then sometimes we just lack wisdom. Let me read uh, James uh, 1 through 5. You know, God, uh, God says that, uh, you know, if we lack wisdom, we, we need to ask him and he'll give it to us. So James, the first chapter in verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So God will give us wisdom if we ask for it. And there's a number of ways we can, we can uh, get wisdom. Uh, so a lot of times we just we don't know there's a number of reasons why we, we don't even acknowledge our sin because we don't even know it's a sin. And, uh, you know, and even on that point, a lot of people think this is a sin and somebody else in the Church of God will not think that it's a sin at all. Just at, at one example that probably most of you are aware of, some, some people in the Church of God think that going out to a restaurant on the Sabbath is a sin. Most people don't, but it's just one example of some people consider that a sin, most don't. And it's, it's a matter of conscience, really. So let me uh, also read, uh, I won't turn to it, but let me read Romans 10, chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. But they have a zeal for God, but without knowledge. And, and I primarily that's talking about knowledge of, of Christian living. There's a lot of knowledge we can have about the Bible, but a lot of it has nothing whatsoever to do with Christian living. And God is primarily interested in our understanding of Christ, Christian living, our, our, our understanding of how to have good relationships. And I think that's what this particular verse is talking about. They have a zeal for God. They don't really understand. They're confused. They're they're, they're lacking in what it actually means to have a true knowledge of Christian living. 
My second point is pray about it. You know, if you if uh, if you uh, if you learn that you have a sin. Again, what the the point being today is learning to hate sin. God is holy. God hates sin, and we obviously want to be like God. And if we don't hate sin, if we don't hate our sin, then chances are we won't overcome it. Sin, many, many times, often, uh, back in the Old Covenant, it talks about how Moses uh, rejected, I forget exactly the word, but he he desired God's way of life, not the pleasures of sin for a while. And sin does have, many sins have pleasure. One of the reasons why we don't acknowledge it as a sin, and we don't hate it enough. God wants us to hate sin with a passion. And so we need to pray about it. When we, when we learn that there is a sin, pray about it, maybe even fast about it, talk to somebody about it. But we need to uh, take some action towards any sin that we come to realize is a sin. My third point is related. Think deeply. Think deeply and long about the consequences of sin. And this is critical. A lot of times we don't understand what our sin does to not only to ourselves but to other people. Uh, we've all we've all experienced that. There are there are uh, sin always hurts. No, sin always damages. Sometimes hurt is good, but sin always damages someone, whether it's yourself and oftentimes other people. Whenever we sin, it's it's damaging to someone. And so we need to really think about how, how does that sin damage not only myself, but how is it damaging other people? And James makes it clear that the most common way we do this is with our tongue, with our words. Let me just read uh, James since I'm, well, I guess I'm not in James. Uh, James chapter 3 and verse 2. James chapter 3 and verse 2. One of the things that uh, we really need to think about deeply is how powerful our tongue is, our words are. Chapter 3, uh, verse 2. For in many things we offend all. For in many things we offend all. That's James talking the half-brother of Christ. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And that's better said, the same is a mature man, a, a complete man in, in one sense, a very mature man. Somebody that doesn't offend in word, which, frankly, nobody is that mature. The only one that was, was is Christ. And able also to bridle the whole body. So, the tongue is very important. And what is the most uh, common act of, uh, uh, action that we, perf we involve ourselves in? Talking, right? We talk a lot. Human beings talk a lot. And James makes it clear, and he observed Christ for who knows how long. Uh, I think he was born a year or two after Christ. He observed Christ, and he's making this very clear, that our tongue, we, we have got to be careful with our tongue. It's, it's, it's an incredible, powerful uh, tool that we have. And as we think about the words we say, think about the consequences of what, what we have just done, to, either to ourselves I won't get into specific specifics. Maybe we can in the message chat. But our words are powerful, very powerful, and they can be for for good and for and for, I'll say, evil. 
A lot of evil with the words that we use sometimes. We have to be careful, but they can be used for good. Building people up, that's what God wants us to do. Building people up, strengthening them, giving them uh, what they need. Sometimes they need to be hurt, but not. And that usually has to come from a close friend. Usually uh, some, someone that you're not close to, it's not a good idea to say hurtful words. Never damaging words, but close friends can close friends can talk in ways that people that are not close can't. You know, there's it's a common uh, common thing re regarding uh, human beings today, especially men. I would say I think men are more this way than women, and that's the put down humor. Put down humor. We see it all the time, especially on TV, but we see it all, all, all the time with people. And, you know, if you're, if you're a close friend, close friends know when you're kidding. Most of the time, 95% of the time. Uh, and and the, in, a lot, in, in that case, there's probably not, you know, I, I firmly believe that really close friends, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be careful. You should think about what, even in the put down humor with close friends, but there, there's a, a carelessness about people that are close. You know, you can do things with people that you're close to that you shouldn't do with people you're not close to, you know? And uh, because they know where you're coming from and they know you're kidding and they know it's done in fun. But uh, again, if the relationship's not close, have to be very, very careful. Uh, point four is uh, change any habit that leads us to sin. That's a tough one. Change any habit that leads us to sin. Again, I'm not going to get specific. We can think of specific things that, that uh, lead us to sin. And we need to think deeply about that and have the courage to do whatever is needed to stay away from that temptation. Again, sin can be very pleasurable. It's the way it works. That's the way, uh, that's the way Satan has set it up. And uh, it's, it's part of God's plan. God's plan, I've mentioned before how free will is a fundamental, probably the most complex aspect, to my knowledge anyway, of God's plan. Free will. Very, very complex. Uh, he wants free will for everyone. It'll be, free will will last for eternity. It's one of the reasons why he needs godly leaders. And uh, it's something that uh, God has free will, but God is not tempted to sin one, one iota because he has... He's such a, uh, a holy being. He wants us to learn to grow into holiness. So change any habit that leads us to sin. Uh, remove anything. And, and I, I need to clarify or, or uh, it, explain this a little bit. Remove anything that tempts us to sin. That's a tough one. You know, there are things that are, we're tempted to use, to have, to go to, uh, to enjoy. We've got to be careful about it. We have to learn to hate sin. And when we get involved in things that lead us into sin, then we need to seriously think about that and really be honest about how it does lead us to sin. And if it's, <clears throat> if it's serious enough, then get rid of whatever it is that's leading you to sin, leading us to sin. It's something that we, we can't play around with. You know, Christ uh, used some hyperbole when he said, uh, you know, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. Well. He didn't mean that literally. 
You know, that's obviously uh, ridiculous to think that he meant that literally, but he meant it so we would take it in a very, very serious way, radical way. If, some, if something is getting in, in the way of us uh, not being righteous, something is tempting us or pushing us to sin, then pluck it out. Get rid of it. It's not part of God's character. He wants us to learn to hate sin. And Christ often uses hyperbole. And there's a lot of scriptures in, in the Bible that, that are hyperbole. We, we can't necessarily take it literally. So, my last point, number five, is always remember God's Spirit is unbelievably powerful. When we have God's Spirit, we have a power that we can't even comprehend at all. It's a powerful, powerful tool. It gives us what we need to overcome. And God wants us to overcome. It's, it's not a uh, automatic. We don't change and overcome by osmosis. We have that free will. He wants, we have to use it. It's something that God wants us to learn to use. And again, that free will depends on our affections, our desires, our thoughts, our values, our memories, our understanding, our judgments. The free will is determined by our heart. And the heart is everything we are. And God wants us to change our mind. He wants us to change our affections whenever they're not in agreement with his. And by doing that, slowly we change our heart. Slowly we become more and more like God. And the free will to do God's will becomes stronger. And he gives us further insight. You know, obedience brings more insight into God's way of life. And as he gives that insight to us, then we have another opportunity to change. You know, if God, uh, I'll use, an, uh, again, a little bit of hyperbole. Uh, a man came to Christ. Now, he was talking to Christ. And he said, Master, what good thing do I have to do? Or what, what, what do I have to do to, to have salvation? And probably you all remember, Christ said, he said, keep the commandments. And the man said, well, I, I've done that all my life. And <laughs> Christ said, well, uh, the man was very rich, very rich man. And Christ knew that. I think this is a real story. Some people think it's a story. I shouldn't say a real story. I think it, it ha actually happened. Christ said, go and sell all that you have and follow me. That was Christ. This man knew Christ was the Messiah. Now, if, if Christ came to us back then, and you, we knew he was the Messiah, then whatever he said, we should do. Now, some people have said, well, Christ was giving this man an opportunity to be an apostle. And that's possible, but it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that at all. And we should never minimize what God expects, us, expects of us. If God, if we know for sure that God is uh, revealing something to us and it jives with Scripture and, and it's, it's part of God's way of life, then we need to do it. We need to learn deeply and thoroughly by th meditating on God's way and his Scriptures and his principles. We need in order to become more like God, we need to hate sin.